Christ the Redeemer Catholic Church in Thibodeau, Louisiana welcomes you on Sunday, April 26, 2015, the Solemnity of the Most Holy Body and Blood of Jesus Christ, also known as the Feast of Corpus Christi. Today's reflection was recorded on the campus of Creighton University in Omaha, Nebraska, as Father Mark Toop serves during the summer as a faculty member and spiritual director for the Institute for Priestly Formation. Today, Father Mark will speak to the hunger within many Christians who aren't being fed. With so many today who leave the Catholic Church because they aren't being fed, Father Mark will ask the question, whose job is it to feed us? As always, we welcome you to join us at Christ the Redeemer and experience our family. Until we see you, remember that God is tirelessly pursuing you. Now, Father Mark. Well, peace be with you, my brothers and sisters at Christ the Redeemer Catholic Church in Thibodeau, Louisiana. I greet you today from Omaha, Nebraska, and the Institute for Priestly Formation with the famous words of the Apostle Paul. As Paul was often away from the communities that he loved dearly, he would reach out to them and he would greet them with a message of peace. And so I share with you the famed words of the evangelist St. Paul as I say, peace be with you. I pray that your celebration of this most sacred feast this morning of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ as we celebrate the solemnity of Corpus Christi was filled with grace. I know that this morning you are with Father Alex Godet and what a special grace in all of our hearts to have his priesthood now bestowed upon us and celebrating with us. I think the last time I saw us all and, and reached out to you was on Memorial Day weekend where we not only celebrated Father Alex Godet's ordination to the priesthood, but we celebrated his first Mass of Thanksgiving on Sunday afternoon. And what a beautiful grace that was for us. Immediately after Mass, I got on the road to eventually get here to Omaha, Nebraska. And that travel usually has me on two flights, a flight out of New Orleans and, of course, a connecting flight that eventually gets me to Omaha. As my connecting flight was in Dallas uh, just a few weeks ago, I had the privilege of meeting a newly married couple as they sat right next to me, and we kind of celebrated the excitement and joy of their wedding and kind of laughed about the anticipation for their honeymoon, and of course, I shared with them my weekend, and of course, just with my clerical attire, they asked if I was a Catholic priest, and I, with great joy, said absolutely, and, and then of course, they responded with words that I've heard a lot in my life. You know, Father, we, we used to be Catholic. Kind of always touched when I hear that, that line. I, I'm often intrigued with the journey of life and always intrigued with, with people's story and why is it that they leave the church and what is it that they're, they're hungry for. And their response was almost like every response that I've heard in those conversations as they said to me, you know, Father, we just weren't being fed. We wanted to be fed. Look back at my own life, and I just have to admit, as I've often shared with you, that, you know, my journey for God and my desire for more in life, uh, for a time in my life, took me outside the walls of the Catholic faith, and I was searching myself. I wanted to be fed. I know that a lot of us who are listening today are maybe even in that same spot. Maybe you have left the church. Maybe you were never part of a church. Maybe you're hungry for something. Maybe you don't even you know, believe in religion, or maybe you're not even Christian, but you just want more out of life. I think a lot of us who are listening right now, you, you're hungry for more. You want peace in life. You, you want less anxiety. You want life to be easier. Maybe you want direction, or maybe tonight, Today, right now, is a time where you're giving God, quote unquote, one last chance to speak to your heart. And if that's where you are, hey, praise God. I know for a lot of us, uh, I've heard your heart and I've listened to the story of how your, for some of us, our, your own kids no longer go to church. Or maybe it's your spouse or maybe it's people you love and the reason they don't go to a Catholic church anymore is because they weren't being fed. And I think it's really important for us to befriend 
the questions that people ask. I think the, the questions that people ask are just as important as the answer that they eventually find or that they grasp for. The questions that people ask say a lot more to us than, than even where they look for the answer. I think it's important for us to not be afraid of the questions in life. And so if you're asking questions, if people that you love have asked questions, God is a part of everything and he's with us in the questions if we have the courage to let him in and let the light shine. And if that's where you are tonight, praise God. And if you want to be fed, if that's where you are, if you're looking for a church or you've left church or you're just somehow listening to this talk because you want to be fed, I just think that that's a natural part of being human. And underneath the question is desire because it's desire that gives birth to the questions. It's desire that gives birth to the searching in our life. We want to be fed because we long for more. You know, so before we go in, you know, to a conversation about being fed and and eventually whose job is it to feed us, I just want to acknowledge if, if we're listening today, you want to be fed, praise God. It's great to be with you. We're all searching. We're all hungry. It's the beauty of, I think, the church and her wisdom and the Bible itself. And there's a great talk by by Jeff Cavins, and the the title of the talk is I'm Not Being Fed. I've posted his talk in its entirety on our website. Whose job is it to feed us? Who's, Who's ultimately responsible for feeding you and I? We're all hungry. The question is not what are we hungry for, but Whose responsibility is it to feed us? Because the hunger is there. It's right there in the Bible. Uh, Jeff Caven starts with uh, the talk. He, he, he brings our attention to Psalm 63. And I love Psalm 63. Listen to the lines because I think it speaks to our desire where you just feel like your soul feels like a dry, weary land without water. That's what the psalmist is talking about. If you're hungry for more, if you're thirsty for more, that's what the psalmist is saying. We've all been there. We're all searching for something. The question is, who's ultimately responsible for quenching that thirst and for satiating our hunger? Not only is Psalm 63 a really encouraging psalm, but the most popular Bible passage in the entire world is Psalm 23. If you look at Google and You ask Google what's the most often looked for passage in the entire Bible. It's Psalm 23. Listen to the the, the beauty of Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I lack. In green pastures, he makes me lie down. To still waters, he leads me. He restores my soul. He guides me along the right paths. Let me just stop right there for a second. You know, this beautiful image of God being a shepherd. That's really important because I think that the the guy who even wrote that psalm uh, knew the Lord in a very powerful way. Of course, David wrote most of the psalms. He certainly wrote Psalm 23, and, and David himself was a shepherd. You know, he's a great king of Israel, but before he was the great king of Israel, he was the son of Jesse, the youngest son of Jesse. And He was the shepherd. He spent much of his time out there with the sheep. David knew sheep. David knew shepherds. And David knew the desert. He knew the wilderness where the sheep would pasture and graze. And and David knew that there were a lot of paths out there in the desert. And if if you followed the wrong path, you might wind up in a very dangerous area or you might wind up in an area where there was no food. We can probably connect with the image of sheep more than, than, we, than we believe a lot of times. And you just look at everything that I have, quote, unquote, fed my soul in life. And I think a lot of us do that. A lot of us undiscerningly or living off of emotion or just living off of a compulsive drive in life and a grasping for something that will feed us. We don't always feed our soul with the right thing, just like sheep don't always eat the right thing. So sheep will eat what is ever in front of them. And a good shepherd knows that. So it's the shepherd's job to lead the sheep 
to the pasture. And that's what Psalm 23 is talking about. And the shepherd needs to know where to lead the sheep because there are all these paths in the wilderness. David knew that. David knew that there were thousands of different little paths all over the desert. Just like today, there there are so many ways, so many quote-unquote paths to feed you if you're not being fed. You can, you can do religion. You can do, quote-unquote, spirituality without religion, right? You can do mainstream religion. You can do non-denominational worship. You can do big churches, small churches. You can do charismatic churches, traditional churches. You can do churches with the Eucharist, churches without the Eucharist, churches with a big band, churches with no band. All kind of, there are thousands and thousands of different options today. It can get overwhelming for somebody who wants to be fed. How do you know that what you're feeding your soul is actually going to lead you to freedom? It can be, if, if it's your job to feed yourself, then how do you know that the choices that you're making in your spiritual life are the choices that are going to lead you to freedom. We want to be fed. Whose job is it to feed us? Because it's the shepherd's job to, to feed the sheep. And if God's the shepherd, then that means we're not. You're not the shepherd of, of your life and I'm not the shepherd of my life. And, if I could just boldly proclaim that to us tonight and if we could believe the truth that there is a shepherd who is guiding us in life and it's not you or me. The Lord is my shepherd and if he's my shepherd, then that means the Lord is ultimately responsible for feeding me, not me, not you. In Isaiah chapter 40, he furthers this image as he says like a shepherd he feeds his flock in his arms he gathers the lambs carrying them in his bosom and leading his flock with care so if the lord's my shepherd then it's his job to feed us and if we can now agree in some way for the rest of our conversation today that it's not your job to feed yourself, it's God's job to feed you, then the question is, how is it that the shepherd wants to feed the flock? Because that's a really important thing to him, so important that he, he gathered the priests of the Old Testament and he entrusted them with the care of the flock, the spiritual life of the flock. And in the Old Testament, Not only do we see the life of shepherds, but we see that image now connected to God as well as those who act on behalf of God and who serve the people on behalf of God. And when shepherds don't know how it is that he has designed us to be fed, then we can automatically get into danger. And this is a really important message for all of us today that just because somebody calls himself a shepherd in today's language doesn't mean that he's guiding us to the right path. Shepherds act on behalf of God, not on behalf of themselves. And if we are going to shepherd people, then we have to be obedient to the way that the shepherd has asked the flock to be fed. Ezekiel chapter 34, God was speaking directly to the shepherds of the Old Testament as he said to them, Woe to the shepherds of Israel who have been pasturing themselves. Should not shepherds pasture his flock? That's Ezekiel 34 verse 2. He says, hey, I was entrusting you shepherds to tend to the flock, to feed people the way I want them to be fed. And you've been feeding yourself and you've been tending to yourself. And that is a bold message to every shepherd today. Inside the Catholic Church, outside the Catholic Church, pastors across the country, to whom much has been given, much is expected. There's a responsibility, you might say, a God size burden in, in shepherding and how do you know that what we're feeding the sheep is what they're supposed to be fed with so of course he intervenes God intervenes God says okay I want my people to be fed so much I do not want them to go hungry he says I am now going to intervene inside the story of human history and of course God becomes one of us in this dramatic climactic moment in history God now in the incarnation of Jesus Christ dwells among us and now the shepherd has a name 
and his name is Jesus Christ. John chapter 1 says that the word became flesh and made his dwelling among us and we saw his glory, the glory of the Father's only Son, full of grace and truth in Jesus Christ. God now is there and in Jesus Christ, everything about God is there. He is full of grace, full of truth. He is the way, the truth, and the life and that truth is going to set us free through the shepherd, which is of course an image that Jesus not only fulfills, in his identity, but proclaimed in his message, right? Jesus in John chapter 10, verse 11 and verse 14 says that he is the good shepherd. He says, I am the good shepherd. A good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. Again, in verse 14, he says, I am the good shepherd. I know mine and mine know me. See, Jesus not only knew the Psalm 23 about the Lord is the shepherd, but he says in a sense, I am the good shepherd. Not just a shepherd, but a good shepherd. And a good shepherd knows how to pastor the flock. A good shepherd knows how to lead his people to eat the right thing. A good shepherd wants to feed the sheep. And then we want to start to wrap our minds today around how is it that God wants to feed us? Because Jesus gave us some very specific wisdom and instruction about how he wants us to be fed. And, and, and if, if you're listening today, if, you, if you're hungry, if you want to be fed, then the question is how is it that Jesus himself wants us to be fed? Because he wants to. Of course, he knows he's going to die. He knows he's going to rise. He knows he's going to ascend to the Father. Jesus knows all this. He knows that eventually he's not going to be on the earth. He knows that people in the year 2015 are still going to be walking around, asking the same questions, having the same hunger. Jesus knows 2,000 years ago that today somebody would look at me on a plane and say, Father, I wasn't being fed And so he looked at his apostles then, and he said to them in John chapter 14, verse 18, I will not leave you orphans. I will come to you. Let me just stop right there. If you're listening and you've ever felt alone in life, if you've ever felt the burden of life, if you've ever wondered if you're just kind of trudging through life on your own, I want to speak to you now and say you're not alone. You've never been alone. He will not leave us orphaned. And even if your feelings are deceiving you, you feel alone, you feel overwhelmed, you feel burdened. You're not. When God makes a promise, he always comes through on his promise in his way. And if he said he's not going to leave us orphaned, then that means he's not going to leave us. In fact, he says, I will not only not leave you, but I will come to you. John 14, verse 18, he says, I will not leave you orphans, I will come to you. How is it that he is going to come to us today? Not 2,000 years ago, not when he was walking around, talking to people, saying the things that we read in the Bible. How is it that today he's going to come to us? Because you see, if he's not going to leave us, then that means he is... He has to make that promise for all of eternity. And that means today in our lives, he has to be with us. And he says, I will come to you. How is it now that he's going to feed the hunger in our hearts that says, I'm not being fed? Well, of course, he says that to us in John chapter 6. John chapter 6, there were a lot of people who were hungry. 2,000 years ago, the crowds were searching. That really gives us hope today. If you're asking the question about more out of life, if you're asking questions about religion, they've been asking that question for 4,000 years. 2,000 years ago, people were asking questions about Jesus. And if we're still asking questions now, that just means that we're human. Take the pressure off yourself. Join the rest of the human race. People have been, been, been looking to be fed for a long time. And they came to Jesus that day, and they said to him in John chapter 6, verse 30, What sign can you do that we may believe in you? You ever done that? You ever ask God to like show you something? Hey, God, I want to believe you, but I need you to work a miracle in my life. God, I want to believe in you, but I need you to do something dramatic for me so that I can just have a little faith. They they, they were asking that 2,000 years ago. Of course, they, they, they lift up for Jesus what God had done in the past. They quote actually Exodus chapter 16, As they say, you know, in the past, he gave our ancestors manna in the desert. When did he do that? Of course, that's Exodus chapter 16. 
after God had led his people out of slavery into freedom, after he led them out of Egypt in Exodus 14 and Exodus 16, they're hungry. They're in the desert. They're wandering through the wilderness, and they're, they're physically hungry. And if it was God who led them out of Egypt, then that means God's going to have to provide for them along the journey. God's the one who chose them. God took the responsibility for possessing them. That means that God has taken the, uh, the responsibility for providing for them. And he gave them this miraculous bread. We see that in Exodus chapter 16. Every day they'd wake up and they would, from the dew fall, they would have this miraculous manna from heaven. And the manna, the bread from heaven, this miraculous bread that came down from heaven, fed their bodies. And yet Jesus, as he's looking at the people 2,000 years ago, knows that there's a physical hunger, but he can see in their eyes that they have a spiritual hunger. They want more. They want to be fed spiritually. Jesus says, I am the bread. My, in the Old Testament, the bread came down from heaven, and that's what you ate. Well, I am now the one who has come down from heaven, and I am the bread that is going to feed you. And if you eat this bread, if you eat me, Jesus says, I am the bread, and if you eat the bread, that means if you eat me, if you eat Jesus, then you will never hunger, and you will never thirst. And of course, he, he goes through in John chapter 6 and, and, and shares line after line, statement after statement, this beautiful discourse sharing with his followers that he is the bread of life. Now let me hit pause here for a second and just remind us that we as a community have been here before. In fact, in Lent, the fifth week of Lent, the fifth Sunday of Lent, right at the end of Lent on March 22nd, we gathered together and we had a whole homily that was dedicated to unpacking the biblical arguments for the Catholic Eucharist. And I would just draw your attention to that homily. It's also on the website. The fifth Sunday of Lent, March 22nd, the biblical roots of the Eucharist. If you're looking for more, you can go there. But what we see, what we can kind of agree upon is that he gave us this discourse showing us that he wanted us to be fed by him. We no longer be had to be fed by the law. We no longer had to be fed by the word only. He wanted us to be fed by him, by his presence. He's the bread. If you're hungry for more, the answer is Jesus, and he doesn't want to leave us orphan. Today, 2,000 years after his death, resurrection, and ascension, he's still feeding us. The shepherd's still taking care of the flock. He still wants to feed their hunger in our hearts. If you want to be fed, he said, I want to feed you in the Eucharist. And that's why we celebrate it today in church, in the liturgical celebration called Corpus Christi. We acknowledge that God wants to feed us with himself in the Eucharist. And of course, that's not going to magically come down from heaven. That comes through the priesthood. And before he ascended into heaven, he met with not only his apostles, but with the greatest of his apostles. He met with Peter and said to Peter, Peter, do you love me? And of course, Peter said, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. And then what did Jesus say to Peter? Peter, feed me my sheep. John chapter 21, three times, he asks me, Peter, do you love me? And then he says, okay, well then if you love me, I need you to do what I did. I need you, Peter, to feed the sheep. But Peter, I didn't feed the sheep with Peter. I fed the sheep with me. So he looks at Peter and says, I need you to now do what I did. I need you to feed the flock. But I don't want you feeding the flock with Peter. I need you feeding the flock with me. Feed them with the Eucharist. And so that's the beautiful part about this whole thing. What we celebrate today is a God who knows that people are out there on airplanes, in hospitals, in marriages, in pews, in churches, in parks, in bar rooms, in all different types of places all over the world, and people are saying the same thing, I want to be fed. And today, across the world, in big churches and small churches across the world, he fed people with himself. 
It didn't matter if they had a beautiful church. He fed them with the Eucharist. It didn't matter if their priest was a great preacher. He fed them with the Eucharist. In Africa, in Asia, in Europe, in America, in South America, with dynamic personalities and guys who were just doing the best they can, it was God feeding people, not through the personality of a minister, but with his very self in something bigger than a person, in the person of Jesus Christ, in the Eucharist. In languages across the world, God fed his people today with the same thing that he's been feeding them with for 2,000 years. My brothers and sisters, if you're hungry, it's because you're human, not because you're searching. And if you're hungry, the good shepherd wants to feed his flock with himself, with the Eucharist. And that's what we celebrate today. Whose job is it to feed you? It's God's, not yours. And it's not our job to figure out how God wants to feed us. He's already told us, and he's been doing it for 2,000 years in Catholic churches across the world in the precious body and blood in the Eucharist. Praise God. Now, I would like to maybe speak a word of encouragement, if I can, to all of us today. Some very particular places in my heart that I just want to share with you. The first is, you know, if we have anybody listening today, and it's just been a long time since you've been to Mass, I just want to echo the words of the Holy Father and say, hey, come to the table. It's time to come home. Maybe you grew up Catholic and maybe you left the Catholic Church and maybe somebody even forwarded you this homily in an in a email link and you've been kind of looking for a sign from God. Well, hey, consider this it. He's speaking to you right now and he's saying, hey, come home to the Eucharist. And maybe it's, you, you've, you've like the prodigal son have left the father and wandered in all kinds of places and and maybe you feel unworthy or sinful hey that's okay come back home the sacrament of reconciliation is is, is awaiting you and, and 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 with that freedom and forgiveness so too is is the eucharist so the first person i'd like to speak to tonight is the person if you've left the catholic church it's time to come home because god wants to feed you with his body and blood But I also know that there are a lot of my brothers and sisters out there who, who weekend after weekend are sitting in pews in Catholic churches across the world. And I just want to let you know I love you. Sometimes our lives don't look the way that we dreamt they would when we were little kids. I know that there are many people who sit in pews. Maybe you're divorced. And, and, and for whatever reason, you, you don't go to communion. Or maybe you're remarried and you haven't received an annulment and maybe you know what it's like to sit in the pew and watch everybody else go up for communion. I want to speak to you today and tell you I love you. Maybe you're just coming back to church and you don't come forward to receive the body and blood of Jesus because of just the journey that you're on. Or maybe you're not Catholic and you have questions about the church and because you didn't grow up Catholic you don't come to communion. If there's anybody listening now and you sit in the pew and you don't come forward for communion, I want to let you know God loves you, and so do I. And at least at Christ the Redeemer, I want to invite you to come up and at least receive a blessing. Let the, let the hand of the Good Shepherd and His priesthood at least touch you, to reach out to you. At least come up for a blessing. You know, sometimes I'll, as I give out communion, I see people sit in the pew Sunday after Sunday and they don't come forward. And I know that there are lots of different personal reasons why they may not, but I just want to let you know that I love you. So does Jesus Christ, the Good Shepherd. And while I certainly believe in the teachings of the church and want to hold fast to her integrity and reverence, at least come forward for a blessing. You're part of the family, and we love you. 
We're all searching, y'all. The question is not, what are we searching for? The question is, how are we going to be found? And how are we going to be fed? Every Sunday, every time you go to Mass, every daily Mass, every big Mass, small Mass, high Mass, regular Mass, doesn't matter. We all get the Eucharist, and let's celebrate that today. How about we pray right now? Just invite you to look inside your heart. Pray with me. Heavenly Father, we love you. Jesus, we love you and we love your word and you are the good shepherd who's come to feed us and to love us and we give you praise and thanks today for everything. Open up our hearts wide today that we might receive the fullness of your mercy. Give us grace upon grace. Lord, if there's anyone searching tonight, I ask that you would continue to speak to them long after they hit stop on this talk. Lord, speak to their hearts tonight. If anybody feels alone, Lord, remind them that you're never going to leave them. Anybody feels estranged from the church, Lord, bring them back. Forgiveness, mercy. Lord, restore in our hearts a belief and a reverence and a longing for the precious body and blood of your son and I ask that almighty God bless us all tonight in the name of the Father the Son and the Holy Spirit